just a simple story like this. I have one bag of candy that has 36 pieces in it and another bag that has 24 in it. Two different bags. And I'm trying to put them together in individual sacks. One piece of candy from one bag in there, one from the other bag, and keep doing it. I want to know what is the greatest number of each kind of candy that will be in that bag, each individual bag. These kind of questions happen when you have parties. When you want, when you've got a big bucket of uh, plates and forks and knives and you've got a picnic going on and you want to know, well, how many, what's the greatest number of combinations do I have comparing 36 with 48 and 52 or whatever. Now, you can sit there and just do 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 it until you find out, well, I, it looks like i got this many in there. But there's a mathematical way of doing it, so if you want a greater number of stuff in each bag, you can figure it out mathematically. And that is what's called greatest common factor. So this is a very useful mathematical concept in just everyday little bitty things. You're having a party and you want to give a, a, a take home, what do y'all call them? Party. Party bag. Party favors. Party bag. <laughs> See, everybody that came to your party. You can use mathematical, you can use greatest common factor to make sure you've got a big enough bag of each kind of stuff you want to put in everybody's sack. Okay? Greatest common factor. Gently now, don't, don't make nobody sick. So, greatest common factor will help us in these stories. Well, let's go through the concept. How do you find greatest common factor? Have y'all covered this in fifth grade? Yes. yes. So, this is a review then, okay? But maybe you didn't know why you wanted to do it. Maybe you were just told, well, we just want to find the greatest common factor. And y'all are going, why? why? Why am I ever going to use this? Well, we are not going to use it. Or you could use it for your party favors if some of y'all have parties that I'm never invited to, but that's okay. Here we go. All right, so let's break down greatest common factor. The first thing is the word greatest. What does that mean to us? Highest number, biggest number, largest amount. Largest amount. All right, so I like all those. So, greatest means biggest number or largest number. That's what we're looking for, the biggest number or the largest number. Okay, common. Common. You see it a lot? You most, see it a lot? Most most frequent, I like that. Usually there. Usually there, Janelle. I always think equal. Equal? Those are all pretty good. Well, I'm going to put alike. Alike. Or same. Like or same? <laughs> now, what did we learn yesterday about the word factor? Multiplication. Wrong. It's a fancy word. Fancy word? For the numbers that will divide into it. Ah, for the numbers that will divide into it. So you were kind of the opposite. All right. So yesterday we talked about the fancy word factor just means number that will divide into something. Something. A number that will divide into something. Number that will divide into it's a fancy word or something. That's right. So, greatest.
greatest common factor, now in everyday language, it's the biggest number that is alike. the same or alike of the numbers that will divide into another number. Okay? Okay? Alright. We are going to do what's called factoring, which has something to do with factor to do this process. Factoring is make a I like Lauren's idea of making a T-chart because we use T-charts in algebra and in a lot of things we're going to do this this year. I'm going to say make a T-chart But I'm going to make a list of factors using a, I'm going to use it there, Lauren, because it's a good thing to know how to do. But I'm going to have my T-chart going sideways, using a sideways T-chart. using a sideways T-chart. That's what it looks like. Do we all know what we're talking about by a T-chart? Yes, sir. A lot of times they're up and down. The reason I like it sideways on GCF, don't follow me, you follow that right over there. I'm ugly. Keep it on that. All right. It saves space on our paper. Because if you make a T-chart going up and down, then a lot of students don't, you know, that uses up their whole piece of paper for one problem. When if we go sideways, then I can go another one sideways underneath it and another one sideways underneath it and we get more on the page. That's why I like a sideways. And you'll find out in mathematics, old Sam buddy, that you do have up and down or vertical T-charts and you have sideways or horizontal T-charts depending on what you want to list, okay? So let's use a sideways T-chart, okay? So, let's find the GCF. We're going to find the Put five. 
See what I'm doing? I'm doing them both at the same time. Whatever goes with the front one, there's got to be one in the back to help me make 15, right? What goes with one to make 15? 15. What goes with three to make 15? Five. five. Okay, will four be there? No. no. Will five be there? Yes. And you say it's already there. Yes. It's already there. I'm finished with my list because six won't, seven won't, eight won't, nine won't, ten won't, eleven won't, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. But it's already on there. See, I already put it up there when I did my one. So there, these are the only factors of 15. One, three, five, 15. We've listed all the factors of 15. Now let's list the factors of 45, Carly. Here we go. What's the first one? One. One. What goes with one? Forty-five. So on the other end, put forty-five. That way I don't have to do it in a little while. I will already have it up there, won't I? Okay. Two. Three. Yes. Yep. How many times? Three. What goes with three? Fifteen. Fifteen, Sam. Good job. Was that you? Good job, huh? Fifteen. Okay. Four. Five. Yes. Oh, five goes with who? Nine. Nine, good job. Six. No. Seven. No. Eight. No. Nine. No. Yes. Already have it. yes, but I already have. have it. And since I already got it on the other end, I'm really done because 10 won't, 11 won't, 12 won't, 13 won't, 14 won't. 15, 15 will, but I already got it. So I'm done listing my factors. Now, make a list. Make a list. Now let's circle what's common. Remember we're talking about common. Ones, threes, fives, and fifteens. Those are all the common ones. But we're looking for the Greatest means biggest. In this list that is circled, what's the biggest one? 15. So I put GCF equals 15. What y'all think? Okay. If it was confusing last year, is this a little better? Yes. Okay. All righty. Now, do you see why I like my T-chart going sideways? If I go up and down, it's going to use a lot of my paper. You understand, Lauren? So it's a good, good idea for T-chart, but let's do it sideways. All right, let's find the GCF of 32 and 24. So 24 and 32. All right. One. And what goes with one? 24. 24 on the other end. I like that. Okay. Now, why did I leave myself this big blank right here? Because there's nothing in between. Well, I didn't know how many I was going to have. I just made sure I had enough room so it wouldn't all be crammed together and I couldn't read what I had. So I give myself a lot of room. So what? I got a big gap. That's okay. But I need to leave myself some room, don't I? Because there might be a lot of them in there. All right, what's the next number that Two. Was? Two. Thank you. Two goes Four. with? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Twelve on the other end. Three. What about the next number? Three. Yes. Three. Three goes with eight. 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 What about four? Yes. Yes. Four goes with six. 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 What about five? No. What about six? Yes. Already, got already got it, so I'm done. Because seven won't, eight? Yes. Already got it. Nine won't, ten won't, eleven won't, twelve? Yes. Already got it. Blah, 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 right? So we're done with 24. Now let's go to 32. One. Two. Thirty-two. Now remember, I want to do the back end too, so I don't have to keep going, okay? Two. All right, two. What goes with two? Sixteen. Ooh, sixteen. I like that. What about three? No. Will no. three make thirty-two? No. Or three? No. no. Three. Three makes thirty-three, not thirty-two. Four. All right. Four. Four. And four. Eight. Four and sixteen. Eight. Don't believe so. Four and eight. Four goes with eight. eight. 
Five. No. Six. No. Seven. No. Eight. Already have, Already have it, so we're done with 32. Now, circle what's common. The onesies. Two. Twosies. Four. Four. Foursies. Eight. Eight. Eight Zs. Eight, eight Zs. That's it. And that's all. Now, which one's the greatest circled? Eight. eight. So GCF, eight. Am I okay? Did I go too fast? No. Okay. Brother Josh, we're heading back there again. So get up and walk this way, but don't jiggle. Just gently. There you go. Ah! That's the concept with just, here's two numbers, find the GCF. And again, I'm going back to our story now. We've got a party. I got two different kinds of candy. One bag has 36 pieces. The other bag has 24. And I want to know how many, what's the greatest number of each candy can I put in each bag? A real life use of GCF. Where's the key word in here that tells me GCF? Greatest. greatest. Now, nowhere else in our story does it say common factor. Find the greatest common factor so you can go to the party and get a party bag. No. But it tells me find the greatest. That ding dings in my head. Oh, oh, oh. Great. The greatest common factor. Okay, so T chart, and what's my two numbers? 24, 36. All right, let's find them. 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6, 5. We're, we're done. <laughs> we're done. 5 won't. 6 is already up there. So I must have them all. Okay. 36. One. 36. Two. Bullcorn. 18. There you go. It's got to end in a six, dude. All right. Three. Yes. With 12. Very good. Four. With nine. Nine. Five. Six. Six with? Six. Now, notice. Six. I wrote the six down, but don't write it down twice. Six is just six. Okay? Seven. Eight. Nine. Already got it, right? There you go. Good job. All right. So, watch this now. In your party bags, you can put... One piece of candy from each bag in each party bag. Okay? You could put two pieces from each bag in a sack. You could put three pieces from each kind of candy in each sack. You could put four pieces from each kind of candy in one sack. You could put six pieces of candy from each bag in one sack. And twelve. And we wanted to know the, the mostest of each bag could I put in each person's sack. And it is twelve. So twelve pieces of each is my greatest. So each person that comes to the party, in their party sack, going home, they're going to have 12 kinds of, pardon me, 12 pieces of each kind of candy from your two sacks. Okay? If I understand, we answered their story, didn't we? GCF. Greatest common factor. I will point out to you again. I've seen on the tax test, which of course is gone now. It's going to be some kind of star looking test. They asked the question for GCF, greatest common factor, like this right here. 
or you have so many hot dogs and you have so many hot dog buns. What's the greatest number of hot dogs can be made? made. That's the greatest common factor. Granted, you might have some buns left over. Granted, you might have some hot dogs left over. But for one hot dog with one bun, you can make this many. That's the greatest number you can make from the two numbers given to you. That's the greatest common factor. Kill it, dude.